Welcome to the All Things Nintendo Podcast. I'm Brian Shea from Game Informer, and this is a weekly podcast to discuss all the biggest news and games from the world of Nintendo. As I mentioned last week, I have been on the road for a long, long time, so it has been a few episodes since we've had a chance to catch up on all the news. So that streak breaks today because we are going to have a big old news segment catching up on the biggest stories that we missed during that time. And then we are going to transition to our main segment, which is all about the final pre-launch trailer of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Joining me to do that and more is Game Informer's Kyle Hilliard. Kyle, how are you doing? I'm good, man. It's a good a good day. It's a Zelda trailer day at the time of this recording. Yes, and uh, I think you and I, uh, spoiler alert, are very excited for that game. And this trailer kind of amped us up even more. So very excited to break that down with you on the uh, second segment of this show. But we're going to jump right into this news, Kyle, because we have quite a bit of big items. I tried to make it so it was just like, here's some of the stuff we missed over the course of the uh, the time that I was traveling and unable to record timely shows. This is going to be a rundown of kind of the, the bigger stuff, the stuff that I want to talk about. So we're going to kick things off the old fashioned way. It's some Pokemon news. And this is actually a, a more timely news story because Pokemon Stadium officially arrived on Switch Online's N64 catalog. And there is a, oh, there, right. there are a couple caveats. One of the big ones is, unfortunately, you can't transfer any Pokemon into it. So the Pokemon Home or even your old Game Boy cartridges are of no use for this version, which is a bummer. Mm. But you can battle with the original 151 and participate in the mini games that people love so much. What are your memories of Pokemon Stadium on N64? Pokemon Stadium on N64. Um, I rented it quite a bit a few times. And uh, personally, was kind of underwhelmed by it myself because I wasn't really playing Pokemon on the Game Boy games. So for me, it was really like if you excise that part of it, right, you you're not bringing your own Pokemon into the game from the Game Boy games. Mm -hmm. It's not like a ton to Pokemon Stadium other than the charm at the time of seeing Pokemon in 3D. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty much all I needed at that point. But yeah. Once you so dug I, yeah, into I wasn't, the content, I wasn't was. quite as like hardcore Pokemon. So it was a little for that reason, it kind of ended up being a little underwhelming for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do remember even as a kid being like, oh, my God, this is what the Pokemon game should look like. Like, imagine having a full game like this. And now, of course, we have that. But back then, <laughs> like that was the novelty is like, oh, wow, like Bulbasaur looks like the Bulbasaur in the cartoon or whatever, you know, and like, yeah, yeah. Seeing them play out all the moves and everything. It was such a cool novelty. But then, like, you got really into the content. And you're like, there's not a whole lot here unless you did transfer your Pokemon in. But even then, it was just like you could just do battles. It's like I could do that on my Game Boy. It just doesn't look as pretty. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah, were there's like no RPG too. or anything. Yeah. The mini games are cool. Yeah, those were fun. I'll probably fire this up and play a little bit, but then it'd be like, OK, yeah, I could just go play like Scarlet and Violet or Sword and Shield and have a better looking game in, in a full RPG to boot. So this is a cool trip down memory lane, but uh, it's available now if you have Switch Online plus expansion pack. And uh, that also means you can play online with friends. So that's that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember the other thing that was at the time was kind of a bummer for me was like my the the peripheral that they sold where you could plug in the Game Boy game into the mm -hmm. N64 controller. I just assumed that that was like a Super Game Boy for the N64. What? Like a, that it, you would just could use that to play Game Boy games on your N64. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember like the I, I still have my Super Game Boy, which I'm sure is worth a lot more money than I'm treating it having just sitting in a drawer. But but like, well, yeah, I remember. But then a friend told me who had it. There, it was like, oh, no, no, that's not how it works. It just lets you transfer your Pokemon to the game. And I remember being like, really? Well, what's the point of that thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it is a bummer. that There's no like interactivity. Like I, I know that like they don't want people trying to transfer like. I don't know, charge a bug, something, some Pokemon that didn't exist prior to uh, when this game came out. But like, there's no way they could let it interact with Pokemon Home, like when that's like a big thing that they've been pushing over the last several years. I, I don't know. It just seems like it, I wish that they could have done that, even though I know this is just kind of like, yeah, Pokemon Stadium is on this subscription service, too. And also Pokemon Stadium, too, is supposed to arrive at some point in the near future. So that's I guess something to look forward to. I never actually played Pokemon Stadium 2. I was purely a Pokemon Stadium 1 guy. I so, um, probably did, right? Like, I think I, it was one of those that I would rent. You know, I rented both of them. Uh, my, my sister was more into Pokemon at that time, so I, I think she was really into it. So we would rent it, and I would play with her. Yeah, I mean, that's it was a good, like, 
friend game, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Pokemon Stadium 1 is out now, and then Stadium 2 is on the horizon at some point. Who knows when? I'm, I'm still shocked they didn't do that, like a, a surprise launch on Pokemon Day. It seemed like a no-brainer, but <laughs> what do I know? Pokemon is just printing money still to this day, and I, I'm not, so I guess they know better than I do. But Kyle, last week's episode was all about the Super Mario Brothers movie, so we're not going to talk too much about my thoughts on the film, because if you want those, go listen to last week's show. But Kyle, I understand that you saw the movie last night, so I want to get kind of kind of some brief thoughts from you on the movie. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed it. Okay, <laughs> it was it was fun. I, it's it's a movie where a lot of things happen for the sake of happening, uh, without a lot of rhyme or reason. They're just happen to get you to the sort of fun looking Mario stuff as quickly as possible. You know, like, Mm -hmm. like there's a sequence where Mario meets peach and she basically immediately takes him to a training ground to train for, for no discernible reason. I I don't know why she took him to train there, but it looked really dang cool uh, when he started training, (laughs) you know, it's like, it's a lot of things like that. Right. Well, I mean, a, a minor, 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 minor spoilers here, but like the, the, the reason for that was Mario was like, Hey, can you help my brother or help me find my brother? And she's like, all right, well, we need to see like, if, are you like good to be like on an adventure with me? Because like, I don't know, it's, it's a family movie. All right, Kyle, it doesn't need yeah, like, but that's, that's the other thing that I I've, that's right. Like a lot of people kind of go that it's like, it's, it's for kids. It's like, look, we, that's, that's diminishing like what kids want from entertainment. Like they are deserving of better things and people have made incredible movies geared towards children. Um, but, and, and I feel like I'm, co- I'm coming off probably I'm coming off more negative than I really am because f- for the most part, it was like, just like, Oh, this looks so great. Oh, look at that thing. I love that thing. That reference to Mario. Oh, this is, this is funny. This is a good performance. You know? Oh, Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong is great. Charlie days. Luigi is great. I love the, the, the basically when Luigi first landed in the, you know, I guess he didn't land in the mushroom kingdom technically. Cause it, the mushroom kingdom is just one part mm-hmm. of this world. But we like that whole sequence pipe. of him getting chased by uh, dry bones and then going into the, you know, the mansion and like the just the the really funny visual gag of all the shy guys suddenly being behind him like that stuff's super fun. And like visually, it was just great. And it was like I love all the sort of like little nods to just like every element of that movie is taken from something else. But um, but it, it is it it. it it's just light on plot and sort of reasons for things to be happening. They just happen. And it's, it looks great when they happen. (laughs) They do. I mean, it it is an absolutely gorgeous movie and uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. I I have seen it three times now and I'm still, uh, I still had a good time with it on my third viewing. I don't need to see it again for a long time, but I, I'm, I'm glad it exists. And I, I stand by my review that I, I think it's a, very very fun movie and it's, it's very respectful of the source material it's really funny because a lot of stories i'm seeing now are like uh people around my age or older taking their kids to go see it right and just like part of the charm is just seeing their kid like react to the movie and how much they enjoy it and for me it was funny because with my kid it was almost the reverse like she could tell that i was really enjoying it <laughs> <laughs> and after the movie, she was kind of like, Dad, I could, I could tell that you were really, like really into that. Like, you really enjoyed that, didn't you? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, what did you think? And she's like, that was okay. <laughs> she's, she's not a big Mario fan. Like, she didn't, she doesn't really play a lot of Mario games or anything like that. So, so it was all, I had the reverse uh, experience than most parents is my kid got to see her dad get really excited about a movie. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Well, Kyle, we have some news surrounding the Super Mario Brothers movie, as you might imagine, because, you know, that's the hot new Nintendo release up until, I guess, Advance Wars comes out and then Tears of the Kingdom after that. But first up, Super Mario Brothers movie has beaten Frozen 2 to secure the biggest opening weekend of all time for an animated movie. God, that is wild. That blows. That is insane. Uh, and it, it wasn't Frozen by 2. a little bit either. Like Frozen 2 had three hundred and fifty eight point two million dollars its opening weekend. And the Mario movie got three hundred and seventy seven point five million in its five day total. Jeez. OK, wow. Good on you, uh, Nintendo. Yeah. yeah, I wonder I think about this because Shigeru Miyamoto is a producer on the movie. 
he he's probably going to make more from this like than he ever does from any hit nintendo game right i mean i didn't even think about that but that's like probably a very good chance of that like he because he's as from what i understand this is all just as far as we know it's not like he 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 has a very respectable salary from nintendo they pay him very well but he doesn't really get royalties and stuff on games as far as i know but here it's like he does get a percentage of the movie so he's probably making more from the mario movie than he has on any video game he's ever made maybe God, that's so weird to think about but yeah you're i mean that there's not a uh an insignificant chance that you were correct there i don't but but please me just I, I love you just continue to make video games don't 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 the, the attraction of hollywood like just let it you know let that be a side <laughs> a side gig for you please I mean, he seemed still very committed to video games when I talked to him about a week and a half ago, or I guess almost okay, two good, weeks good. at this point. Yeah, but he didn't. He hadn't beaten Frozen Two at that point. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> what did you think? And this is again kind of spoiler territory, but it's everywhere on the internet now, so uh, you've been warned. But what did you think about the Jack Black Bowser song "Peaches"? That was fun. It was funny. I like so, that he calls her Peaches. That was charming. It is charming. I, I don't know where it came from because, you know, Peach is already kind of a cutesy name, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's cute. I like I, I like that they were, I'm assuming Nintendo was willing to let them sort of, like, like Luigi's called Lou at some point, which is kind of weird. Yes, that um, really caught me off guard. Yeah, but uh, I, 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 I liked that Bowser called her Peaches. I just thought that was funny. So the, the where I'm going with this is the soundtrack is available now on streaming services and Peaches is included on that. And that song has absolutely started blowing up. It's easily the most popular track on the 37 song soundtrack. And it even cracked the top 100 on iTunes at one point. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the song itself only lasts about a minute and a half. But well, it's in the movie twice, kind of right. Ultimately, yeah, it's in the movie twice and it, it's not in the top 100 anymore. Uh, but it's doing well elsewhere because I, I looked at the music video. There's an animated version that has more than 6 million views over the course of three days. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the number 10. It, or it was in the top 10 of overall trending videos on YouTube as when, when I looked yesterday. And also, uh, Jack Black put out a live action music video. I don't know if you've seen this. I did see that. Yeah, it's very and, weird. Uh, he put it on his Instagram and it got over 5 million views in just under a week. <laughs> and... It doesn't stop there because on top of that, Variety reports that Peaches is eligible for an Academy Award consideration for Best Original Song. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, any original song in any movie is. I mean, that's not. <laughs> I mean, I don't know like what the the qualifier is or anything like that, but like that was a big like report that Variety had was like, hey, like this is an exclusive that it is like eligible that's, for wait, best what? original song that's an exclusive why is that a, that's any original song is eligible Look, man, like, what are they talking about <laughs> i report on video games not movies i don't know if there's some weird caveat or anything that needs i mean to be you have to put your song forward because that was like the big thing like disney uh in after Encanto came out were sort of kicking themselves because they didn't put bruno forward as their oh. oscar song they put a different song forward um and then bruno ended up being the runaway hit um but okay, I don't know. I'll have to go read that variety story because I don't understand why that's interesting. <laughs> I don't, maybe maybe Illumination put it forward or Universal put it forward. Yeah, but even that's not interesting. That's look, like, man. Yeah, like we won an award. Why is that? All like, I'm saying we is would that like song. To win something. <laughs> that song seems to be doing about as well as the movie itself at this point. Yeah. <laughs> also, speaking of music in that movie, just no licensed music. Just get all that licensed music out of that movie. I was so bummed by that. I didn't want any of that in there. I didn't like, mind the No Sleep Till Brooklyn because they no, were still in Brooklyn that. at that point. I, I just don't like. I, oh, you know what? Okay, you do make a good point there because they are in contemporary Brooklyn. That's okay. But once they're in the Mushroom Kingdom, like. Gosh, you know, Brian, if only there was an amazing Nintendo soundtrack that they could have put in place of any of those licensed songs that don't make any sense to have existed in the Mushroom Kingdom. (laughs) (laughs) That's one thing I wish I would have asked Koji Kondo when I was doing that interview with him and Miyamoto was like, was it weird to see like your music put up against like this licensed soundtrack as well? Yeah, I I, yeah, that was that, that. that was just something that I was like, I think was it take on me started playing and I was just like, what are we doing? Like, I don't want this. <laughs> well, I saw somewhere that like, I didn't see this clip, but I heard somewhere I forget where I was where I heard it. But like, apparently there was an original cut of that with Donkey Kong Country music in it. 
Yeah. And it like, worked well. Like, but oh they just were like, no, let's put aha in there. God. I, but that's also, to, to be fair, that's like a something that bugs me about all uh, animated children's movies, which I watch a lot of, a few of these days because my kid's getting older. But um, I, I don't like when they put sort of popular songs that parents know in kids' movies because it's just like, that's all it's there for is so the parents can be like, oh, yeah, I know that song. Like it doesn't, <laughs> it rarely serves a purpose. And the, and the bit of the, I need a hero song playing while a hero is on screen doing something heroic is like, we're, we're good. We're done. We did it. <laughs> Let's, I feel like that is the most anymore. overused licensed song at this point. Saints row. The third did it the best and that we're done. <laughs> Thank you for playing. <laughs> so, Overall, I think it's a very good soundtrack. Um, especially the original oh, score yeah. is awesome. The, the, the original score is fantastic. All the Nintendo themes, I was like tearing up sometimes hearing like that great. orchestrated Mario music kick in. Like I loved it. Uh, that, but that, I think that's why I'm so uh, upset about the licensed music because there's there was something better just in the wings, you know. So uh, not all of the li- the the kind of rearranged versions of the Mario music is on that soundtrack. But it is a very good soundtrack. I was listening to it a little bit yesterday on my phone because, you know, like I said, it's on streaming platforms currently. But did you see that they're putting physical copies out and pre-orders are available now on IM 8-bit? Cool. Like uh, vinyls and stuff like that? So they have a few options here. So the options are double LP vinyl. There's a pink and yellow version that's exclusive to IM 8-bit. And then there's a the standard red and green vinyl. So there's two vinyls in there. It's $42. Then there's a seven-inch record featuring, you guessed it, peaches <laughs> and that is thirteen dollars but the other side features the uh, new rendition of the mario brothers rap and then uh the soundtrack is also going to be available on cd or cassette for twenty dollars so any of those pique your interest uh no no i'll just listen okay. to spotify <laughs> maybe i don't I'll really collect physical i do like physical games and movies uh but physical music stuff i don't nah i don't engage with that not because I, I it's fine i think it's cool but just not something i collect or am interested in Okay, I have a uh, record collection, so I might pick up the the vinyl. I do have a, a few video game soundtracks mixed in there as well. Um, most notably, Turtles in Time and Persona Five on vinyl. Mm, yeah, very I, good, Persona very good 5. soundtracks. I don't even, I haven't really played Persona Five much, but I love that soundtrack. It's such a good soundtrack. Uh, but I have talked about the Mario movie enough over the last several weeks. So, Kyle, what do you say we it. talk about Sonic? Yeah, the Mario movie does make the Sonic movies even worse, in my opinion. <laughs> um, well, I wasn't going to talk about the Sonic movies. I was going to talk about some game <laughs> news. Cool. So uh, Sonic Origins Plus was announced, and that's going to come out June 23rd, which is Sonic's birthday, as well as one year to the day after the original Sonic Origins arrived. This version has Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Knuckles, and Sonic CD, just like the original version. But it also adds 12 Sonic Game Gear games, which are all the Sonic Game Gear games. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah, and on top of that, Knuckles is going to be made playable in Sonic CD, which was kind of like this weird exclusion that they had in the original version. And then finally, this is probably the bigger thing, Amy is going to be playable in the main four games for the first time in an official capacity, and it looks like she'll be able to use her hammer as like an attack. So that's well, kind what of does that mean in an official capacity? Is this something that like fans have done previously? I mean, I'm assuming there's a mod out there that lets you play okay. as Amy because there's a billion Sonic mods. Like the, the fan development community on the Sonic uh, series is just intense like oh yeah of course of course among the most intense i've ever seen in terms of like modding and creating fan games and everything like i have like three fan games on my my pc right now that i want to play um but like this is the type of stuff that i want to get from these classic compilations like let me use different characters let me have like cool ways to play these games that i didn't get to before make it all optional so like if i want the original experience like sonic origins gives you i can do that but like I thought that was such a cool thing that you could play as Knuckles in like Sonic 1 in, in Sonic Origins. And now Sonic Origins Plus lets you give, play a whole new character, which is amazing. So that's the type of stuff that I want in these uh, these compilations. And uh, unfortunately, there's there's been no mention of them getting the rights to the original Sonic 3 soundtrack. So I would probably bet that Ice Cap Zone, Launch Base Zone, um, Carnival Night Zone, I bet they still have the prototype music, which is unfortunate because all of the original versions are substantially better. Mm. And uh, so the pricing is, if you don't already own Sonic Origins, it'll cost you $40. That'll be available both physically and digitally. And the physical version will include a 20-page art book. And then if you do already own Sonic Origins, um, 
you can get the digital upgrade for ten dollars. Did you ever check this uh, this compilation out at all? No, I, I I don't really have a lot of nostalgia for that old school Sonic. Like I was a Super Nintendo kid, and so Sonic was just a thing played at friends' houses, friends' houses. So it's not it's not one I. Uh, seek out or go out of my way to play you know nothing against those games certainly but it's just not uh, it you know i've i don't really get a lot out of revisiting them you know yeah i mean that makes sense i loved this bundle even though there were some problems with it and it seems like they're also going to be fixing quite a few bugs in this even though it, they've also fixed some in post-release patches so hopefully like it it continues to be revealed like there's better and better things about it and i would love it like i I, you know it's kind of like a fantasy at this point but i would love it if they like had one more trailer they're like we got the original soundtrack like that would be the ultimate like okay this is a hundred percent worth the upgrade yeah i mean they you you, why not be as comprehensive as possible with something like this right like i mean some of it is just tied up in so many rights battles because i mean those are the songs that uh michael jackson was allegedly involved with Mm -hmm. so those are the three songs that have always been like oh yeah michael jackson wrote those and well it's not allegedly anymore right i don't know like it's been such like a weird thing of like oh we have this new report that says this and like you know but there's also like the ice cap zone like beat is like ripped straight from like an actual song so right yeah it's like that might have some copyright issues as well so i mean a lot of those sonic songs are you know basically re sort of workings of popular songs I mean, some of them are for sure. I mean, a lot of them are. Yeah. Um, but Ice Cap Zone is especially egregious. Like, go listen to that, and I'll try to find the the name of the song. I think it's Hard Times mm-hmm. is the name of the song. Um, but it definitely preceded <laughs> Sonic 3, so uh, there might be some rights issues there, but... Uh, I really like Sonic Origins. I'm excited for Sonic Origins Plus, but I, the thing that would get me more excited would be those songs. But we are uh, at the place that we are at, and I wish that they were the Mega Drive versions um, or the Master System versions. I'm sorry, the Master System versions of the Game Gear games, because then you'd get the widescreen instead of the the four three Game Gear screen, which has a lot of screen crunch. It would be great to mm-hmm. have the kind of the widescreen support there um, instead of the the kind of compromised Game Gear versions. But again, it's better than nothing, which is kind of my my take on Sonic Origins uh, soundtrack of Sonic 3. It's like, yeah, I'd rather have the the original soundtrack of Sonic 3, but if this is the only way that we can get Sonic 3 on modern systems, then I'll take it. Yeah, like the complaints are definitely like getting, they're, they're, they're minor enough at this point, right? That it's like, there's still something really great here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's kind of where we're at with Sonic Origins Plus. And then speaking of Sonic, we have uh, the first of three content updates for Sonic Frontiers available now. The first one is called Sight, Sounds, and Speed, and it adds a jukebox that features 13 songs, and then you can explore the world and find, uh, I think they're called Sound Memories, and that you can collect up to 40 additional tracks, and uh, they're scattered throughout the world. And it also adds a new Cyberspace Challenge Mode and a Photo Mode. And then update two, which adds open zone challenges, uh, new Coco uh, versions, I guess. And then presumably around the June time frame, because w- the other feature is Sonic's birthday, which, as I said earlier, is June 23rd. Um, and then update three is the big one because that adds new playable characters and additional story stuff. So that's due out later this year. But I have not dived into the new Sonic Frontiers update. And it looks like you can actually find like classic songs like you, there was a, a a uh, screenshot where they were collecting live and learn. So I'm hoping that like, that means like there's a lot of really like great classic songs from the Sonic franchise that you can now add to your, your, your kind of repertoire as you're running around these open zones, because that was always a fun thing to do. Like that was the best time with Sonic frontiers was just exploring the open zones. Yeah. Just running around. It felt good to run around just long distances in that game. Yeah, hopefully they keep building on that. And hopefully this update three is like really impactful. And then, I mean, my ultimate hope for Sonic Frontiers, is that's what the foundation of Sonic games going forward are because Sonic Frontiers, I had a really great time with, but it was very flawed in a lot of ways. So we just need to keep iterating on this system because it's a solid foundation, but just needs a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. Um, And then uh, we got two release date stories before we wrap up this kind of news catch up segment. 
First up, uh, Super Bomberman R2 is uh, getting a release date. And uh, the first Super Bomberman R was a launch title for Switch. And I was not the biggest fan of it. <laughs> um, the big yeah. things that I had with it were it was a uh, like laggy multiplayer. Like literally it was like slideshow quality when it launched. And then the level design was just super boring. So hopefully they address that in the sequel. But um, this has various modes. They're saying, uh, quote, the largest content volume in series history, which seems like a weird way to phrase that. But OK, I'll, I'll yeah, allow it. Okay. <laughs> and then sure. uh, there's a new mode. So they said, like, hey, there's a bunch of stuff we're bringing back for this. And one of the new modes, though, is called Castle where it looks like you're divided into two sides. I'm guessing like one side is defending, one side's attacking, and you're trying to battle for treasure. And then there's going to be a stage editor for that mode as well, which I guess is a cool way to alleviate boring level design. It's just, hey, do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. What well, do you think you can do better? Prove yeah, it. exactly. I mean, that's basically what they did. And uh, that comes to Switch and pretty much everything else on September 13th. And then last but not least, Square Enix gave us a release date for the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster series, which how are you? How excited are you for this to come to consoles? Uh, pr- pretty excited because uh, I have never beaten six. I have started it a number of times. I had the even the Game Boy Advance version I had and never completed. And I'm not like committing. I'm not saying that like, this will finally be the the time that I sit down and play it and beat it. But Brian, I'm pretty sure this will finally be the time that I sit down and play it and beat it when I have it on my Switch Lite. If you really commit to it, I guarantee it will be because. Some of the uh, enhancements that they're doing for this these versions in particular uh, will almost guarantee that. So it's been available on PC and mobile since last year, and now it's coming to Switch and PlayStation on this kind of release wave. And they have these following enhancements. So first, you can change between the original and the rearranged soundtracks. That's a big plus. Um, Sonic could learn something from that. <laughs> you can also change the fonts. Cause I remember that was a big complaint. A lot of people had with the original release was like, Oh, the, the fonts just look out of place. So now you can do the modern one or something that's closer to the original pixel based font. Yeah, that's nice. That's, that's, that's huge. So the console versions also allow you to at will turn off random encounters. So they're Ooh. like, if you just want to explore, we can turn off random encounters, but like, you know, they even say in like the blog post, be warned like this will affect your leveling and like you will have problems if you rely on this too much but then there's this option where you can cut down on grinding by turning on different boost features and that basically allows you to gain experience up to four times faster than in the original games so if you want to like do a little bit of grinding and then turn off random encounters it sounds like you're able to do that that sounds fantastic that actually truly makes me think that maybe i could actually sit down and play this and finally beat this game yeah uh because that's where that's what i would get so annoyed with in the past and even recently i was capturing footage for it for a video that we did of final fantasy 6 i I pulled out my um my mini super nintendo or whatever it's called super nintendo classic Uh, snes Um, mini i think snes mini yeah and like I just the random encounters are just they're too frequent and they're annoying because it's like I just wanted to go over there and see if there was a chest man like do you have to like jump on me right now <laughs> God's yeah, it, I mean that, that's a problem with a lot of especially old school RPGs or old school facing RPGs like it's yeah just like the random encounters are just tuned up to 11. Like I was just playing uh, Final Fantasy X-2 and it was very very apparent in that way and uh, yeah I'm I'm glad that we're kind of learning from that, especially with these re-releases. Yeah, yeah, it worked well. Like Final Fantasy VII, I know, had where you could like speed everything up and you can click the thumbsticks to just get all your health back and stuff like that. Like, because it is just like it's a it's perfect for sort of revisiting those old games. I mean, and and the option to play it the normal way is totally still there for you if you want it. Yeah. And I know people are like, oh, that that desecrates the original version. It's like, no, it's all optional. Don't yeah. don't interact with it if you don't want to. It's the same way as like on the Switch Online, like there's the rewind functionality and people are like, oh, that doesn't count as beating the game if you use that. It's like, yeah, just let people enjoy the games the way they want to. Let people like things. Yes, let people like things. Let people enjoy things. Don't gatekeep. That's the other lesson to take from here. But anyway, Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster Series arrives as a bundle on Switch and PlayStation on April 19th. You can also buy the games individually. So... One and two are $12 a piece. And then 
three, four, five, and six are eighteen dollars a piece, or you can just get mm. the entire compilation for seventy five dollars. And then each game that you buy before May twenty fifth, you get two themed wallpapers. I'm guessing for the uh, like the background because like you know it has to fill out the screen somehow. So I'm guessing it's for that. And then if you get the complete collection, you get all twelve of the wallpapers. So I don't know if you want that then buy it before may 25th but <laughs> do it you did you do that man <laughs> yeah i'm excited for this because i yeah. have not played i've i've played six or i've started six a few times and never gotten all the way through the end i've never played yep. the other yep. ones like i started one back in the day because i got really into final fantasy 10 on ps2 and then i was like oh let me go play the older games and i started one i was like oh no i'm not doing this yeah there's there's if i'm being honest with myself there's no world where i play one and two but um four and six those i might those i might those i might truly play yeah especially with those those uh kind of modernized options like that's the way to play these i've got to imagine unless like you have the time to devote for a large rpg like i just want to experience the story have some fun with it and uh you know be able to say i've experienced it even if it's not like the way the lord intended originally (laughs) right So, Kyle, that is all the news that we are catching up on. Uh, Thanks for joining me for this segment, but you are not off the hook yet because we are going to take a short break, and when we get back, we will be breaking down the final pre-release trailer of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. We will be right back. We are back, and uh, to be honest, it seems like Nintendo finally realized that the release date of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a month away. And people still don't really know what this game is because over the last two weeks, we've gotten two trailers that contain more information than nearly the four years combined since its announcement. Around this time, two weeks ago, we got the 10 minute gameplay demo from Eiji Aonuma, which resulted in us recording the first ever bonus episode of all things Nintendo. And this week we got the final pre-launch trailer for Tears of the Kingdom. Kyle is still here with me, but first, as I've done with some of the other big trailers that we've covered on All Things Nintendo, we are going to start off with our live in-the-moment reactions. We are going to throw to that right now. What's up, everyone? Brian Shea from Game Informer, joined by Kyle Hilliard. Kyle, how are you doing today? Excited for the third trailer, final pre-release, what do they call it? Final pre-launch trailer for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> that implies the existence of a post-launch trailer, which I'm assuming will include an accolades trailer, probably well, they'll, DLC they'll launch, at some point, content update. There'll be a launch update. trailer, right? Yeah, probably. So, but it's just, it's, it's, it's one of those things that the phrasing is weird, final pre-launch trailer, but it's like, okay, I guess I see what you mean. Weird yeah, we're we're officially within a month of this game finally coming out. I, I still remember learning about it at E3 2019. I got to see the entire Nintendo Direct ahead of time as part of kind of like a media pre-brief session, but they excluded the final teaser, which was the announcement of the Breath of the Wild sequel. And so <laughs> I found out about this game, the, the sequel to my favorite game of all time, as I'm on my way to an interview with A.G. Aonuma. So I was like, oh, crap. Like, I'm about to interview yeah. the guy who's in charge of the entire Zelda franchise. Gee, uh, yeah, I remember that because I, I remember you... The way this would work sometimes is you, we would coordinate things. This is what I saw. Here are my stories that are prepped, yada, yada, yada. And I remember watching it live and being like, I don't think they showed that to Brian. <laughs> that seems yeah. like that would have been a big deal. <laughs> that would have... Yeah, been. I probably would have made uh, a story about that. I yeah. would... I would I would wager because I, I remember I wrote all the stories for that Nintendo thing because I, right. I had got to see it beforehand. And then I think Suriel texted me and was like, did you see the Breath of the Wild sequel? And I'm like, yeah. what? So I literally was on my way to interview and I stopped and watched it on my phone before I went to go talk to the guy in charge of the entire I mean, series. To their, you know, not to, to give them a little leeway, I suppose. It's like they had to do everything they could to avoid that leak. Like that was, it's just too precious. So I, I, I get it, but it's like, it would have been nice to know would have been helpful for us. <laughs> and it's funny because I looked over, uh, Andrew Reiner was there with me and I looked over at him and they kind of like faded out in a weird way. Right. Like the, the, whoever was hosting that direct was like, thank you for joining us. It just kind of cut to black immediately. And I, I looked over and I was like, was, was that kind of like an abrupt ending? 
And he goes, nah, I think it was fine. And then I went and played Luigi's Mansion 3 and had a great time. And then later on, I was like, I knew it was it was something off about that. <laughs> so this should start any second now. Yeah, I was kind of uh, hovering we are at... over the... St- oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, all right. Shut up. Shut up. Brian, shut up. I'm A.J. Aonuma, producer of the Legend of Zelda series. There's just one month left until the launch of the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. In this vast world that seamlessly connects the surface and sky, it's curious you'll be if you able to enjoy this using your imagination to the fullest while exploring. Well, the trailer's only it's three minutes, long right? Until I believe you can so, yeah. Experience this unfamiliar Hyrule. I'm also very excited to see how you'll explore this world. Mm. I feel like you know, Mr. Onuma, <laughs> Today, how we'll explore we've it. Today, we prepared the final trailer before the game's launch. All right then, let's take a look. New music Please enjoy. in the background, right? And, and not a whole lot of pomp and circumstance leading into it. Okay. Continuing the focus on the sky. Oh, fighting on their own, are they? This is very reminiscent. Popping down a tree. This is very reminiscent of the final Breath of the Wild trailer, just the way it's paced already. Thing is going to make like the skydiving aspect is going to make exploration so much fun. Ooh, new towns show us a real dungeon, that's all I want. I would actually like to see one, yeah, just a glimpse. Talking a lot, Desert. oh, we got some reverse, reverse no sound. Somebody's probably gonna screen cap that one single frame where, like, oh, his profile. Yeah, you know, I'll do it on the stream. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yes. Oh. Okay. That's what they cut from Resident Evil 4 Remake. <laughs> that's great. Ooh. Zelda. We rely on your knight, and that legendary sword he carries. Our last line of defense will be Link. Link. Let's see that shield on attached to a weapon. I love the- Oh, weird. Whoa, horse. Horse carriage. We're like, whoa, horse yeah. carriage. Whoa. What? Okay, the rocket. rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Slow motion leaping? Look at that. Oh, this is also from Resident Evil 4. Wow. What? Titan battles? <laughs> Look at that thing. Whoa. I know why I am here. Was that Bob Agnew? It's something know. only I can do. Do not wow. look away. You witness a king's revival and the birth of his new world. Oh, there he is. Okay, let's go. A lot of new characters here. Yeah, I love this but rendition of this. You are not alone. Link. Yes. You are our final hope. Oh, that was the, uh, shoot, what's his name? The dragon from the first Zelda. Oh, the multi-headed dragon. Oh, nice. He, he was in another trailer, though, I think. Yeah, he was kind of roaming, but, like, that was our first look at Link, like, charging into battle against him. Oh, is there a post stinger? Link! You must find me. The call to action, they call that. <laughs> is there something after? 
No. That's it. All right. That was great. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming trailer. we're going to do what you uh, you typically do on these streams, like what we've done with the Mario movie trailers. We can go back and kind of... Okay, let's go. Okay. A little volume there. Oh, yeah. Now we can click through a little bit. I mean, it's... There's a lot There's a lot going on here, man. we got the champions back, which is cool. But they're uh, also Did we know they were coming back? Look at that. There's Mr. Ganondorf. God, he looks great. He looks cool. Uh, true, and it's like I, it's that. I wonder if that's like a boss fight in a dungeon. See, okay, so that's a young, that's a really young character. Like the voice was like, oh wow, that's like a child, you know? Yeah. Well, we've even seen like we've even seen the children of that race since Wind Waker, right? No, they're they're in Breath of the Wild. You, 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 the the, the you young ones. Some, okay, I yeah, you're think. right. I mean, now I'm like now I don't have I the so. confidence I thought I did, but and who's this? This looks like. Uh, is that Hylia? Yeah, I mean, look at those ears. Well, I mean, there is a character in those wood car or the the stone carvings that they uncover that has those ears and is has like kind of the markings. I think. Also, her necklace there is uh, uh, Zelda was holding that in her hand. She's like a yellow well, teardrop. What is that from? I recognize well, that from something. She's is that now? Is that one of the guardians or is that a new character as well? I don't remember all the guardians' names. Urbosa. Yeah, is that Urbosa? Let's see. We don't have to get too... So Gerudo oh. for sure. She has, or is that the queen? It looks like a young woman. Might be. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, this is... I was curious about this, because, like, these... You know, some of the... <laughs> I have a little bucket buckethead guy here. <laughs> these are not... I don't think these are... are these are characters that are going to die in a, <laughs> in a cutscene, I think. Ganondorf will murder every single <laughs> yeah. one of those characters. Yeah, they're not over-designed. Oh, look, you're fighting side by side with the Yeah, Zora that's what there? I was wondering when I saw that scene was like, oh. it, it, are, can you like assemble like a squad to fight with you? Uh, maybe. That's yeah, yeah, there's the three-headed dragon you were talking yes. about. That's cool. Zelda has a haircut, it looks like, right? I, I mean, she's had her hair up like that since the original teaser, but I thought it was, like, braided. Really getting into some minutia here. But, um, yeah, what a great trailer. Start. Like, one, once the, one, not the full start, but, like, once we saw, like, was that Ganondorf that we had with, like, the long flowing hair? That Let's see if I can find it real quick as I click through. Because I don't think he had the long flowing hair. I mean, maybe it was some sort of, like, malice related. That's cool, though, diving through the uh, the laser grid. Yeah. Let's see. And then they had... Oh, look, they got the pits in this. Okay, in so that looks like a legit dungeon, right? I think so. Yeah. Let's see. Give us one. Soundtrack is right great. Right there, right there. Ooh, yeah. And that looks like know. a fire dungeon. That's pretty big. I mean, right? It's a big... <laughs> well, but I mean, the dungeons in the last game were not this big. There were no dungeon that had a location that was this large indoors. Yeah, but there, it, I mean, this, there, there were no caves really in Breath of the Wild, and that looks like it could be like maybe a dungeon that you get to or something. I don't know. Yeah, like I think that we're gonna have dungeons beyond the Divine Beasts. This is really cool too. Yes. Yeah, the laser grid. Some new stuff here. That looks kind of dungeony. Yeah. See, you got like regular people fighting with you here, right? Uh, they're, they're like with makeshift armor and that kind of stuff. In the way that I wish they fought along. See, there's like almost like a corrupted version of. I don't know who that is. Is that a new race? Looks almost like Zona like Zonai? Wolf like. Oh, could be. Yeah. Cause like the Zonai are going to play a role in this, this game for sure. Yeah. It's like all the all these like mechanical creatures are like Zonai architecture and Zonai creations. And this looks like you're in Hyrule Castle. Uh, yeah. But like mod, like not, you know, dilapidated, which is interesting. Yeah, that's why I was like, oh, okay. Because it's, I think there's going to be some elements of like past and present and future yeah. coming into play. I mean, especially with the Ouroboros that has been in a lot of the trailers. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot to unpack there. Who's he? Is that? That is not her dad. I don't think. I think it might be a past scene with Ganondorf. To yeah. be honest, I mean, look at that. Because it that sounds hand looks like the like the hand we saw in the you know in the teaser the the dried up hand or whatever. Because I honestly like listen to the voice. It's the same voice. I, I heard that and I was like, because I, I 
I hear a lot of people saying it sounds like Matt Mercer. <laughs> mm. That is Matt Mercer's voice. I'm reasonably sure. Okay. The the just talking. So she has some past history with Ganondorf, which she did in Ocarina of Time. You yeah. know, he remember he he betrayed them, and that that's what Link did after Ocarina of Time is he went back in time to warn Zelda of Ganondorf's betrayal. Right. Okay, wait, go back to where you can hear his voice. Okay, yeah, let's see. Right before uh, that. Is this where it was, I think? Yeah. He carries. Our last line of defense will be Link. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think that... I think you're right. I don't... I think... It's not her dad, because the implication is, like, it's her dad, right? But this is cool right here. He's got a, a full-on shield <laughs> attached to his sword. <laughs> I Ooh, which definitely is missed that. That's cool, oh, though. Like, what is that... that? There's so many things that are just like, what's that? What's that? I want to go there. What's that thing? <laughs> See, that lo that also looked like a dungeon, maybe. Or maybe we're, we're just an elaborate cave system that yeah. exists. Because, like, Hyrule in Breath of the Wild is my favorite version of Hyrule. But it's definitely, like, it, it could be... There's room for expansion. Like, there's very little in way of, like, subterranean exploration. Yeah. And obviously, like, the skies are a completely new frontier in Tears of the Kingdom. So if they can take that original Hyrule that was in Breath of the Wild and add a huge cave system and add all the stuff in the sky. Like, God, how much time are we going to spend exploring? <laughs> I love we freaked air, out. At, version of we freaked out at this, a horse-drawn carriage that they but, used, you know, with the, the ultra hand to create us, presumably. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> there's such like green goo. It's so funny how we're like... Okay, so... Okay, here we go. Plot. Reversing time mid-combat. That's cool. A freaking rocket ship. Rocket ship. What is happening here? Because he is, this is like a flying leap, right? It's like looks like low gravity or something. Oh, that's probably what it is. Yeah, this is looks just like a fun combat sequence. Because it looked like he had like th those those platforms that he was jumping from place to place looked like they were affected by some one of his runes. Yeah, and, or like suspended by some sort of magic thing. So I'm wondering if it was like a low gravity area or like there was like a, an upwind or something, something that he could cast. This I love. He made like a freaking mech. <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly. Uh, he's got a ring pop on his bow and arrow there. That looks. See, like, that was what? What is that dragon I, thing? I think that's an original enemy. I nothing comes to yeah. mind immediately that I'm like that reminds me of blank. See this right here. It's what is that? It, it reminds I, me of one of the. Uh, the things, the stones that you get, the sacred stones in Ocarina. Yeah, I don't think that's. It it, it isn't, right? but it's reminiscent. Yeah, Hylia has, or what well, the thing that we think is Hylia has it on her necklace. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's... if you look at the carvings, um, I'm trying to hold on. Let me bring it up here. Let's see. Change Lee says that's a kobold, like in the sacred tear and skyward sword. I that's okay. Oh. From Calamity Nolan, thank you in the chat. Okay, that's. I knew it looked familiar. I was like, that ha that is in a previous Zelda game, but I just wasn't sure what it was off the top of my head. I'm just trying to find a high quality version of this image. It's very annoying. Yeah, but uh, yeah, let's see what else we. I mean, this there's a lot happening. This is a great final trailer. Um, just a ton of stuff. Tons of like crazy powerful Lionels. Like, there's just a lot. So look at this. <sighs> Wild. I just sent you something on Slack, Kyle. Let me see. Uh, it's an image. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, like it has the the tear amulets plus something that looks like that creature that we saw. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I would pull it up on the stream, but I I'm disconnected from Slack. But um, yeah, great trailer. I mean, my favorite trailer so far, I think. But that kind of like is a, a gimme considering it's like the last big one. You know, of course they're gonna pull it all out for the final one same with the breath of the wild this the trailer that came out in the same time frame was like the yeah. one with zelda crying in the rain and stuff like that so um good stuff man there's a lot in there to, to take in it's very exciting yeah i can't wait to get my hands on this game uh I'm less than a month away that's hard to think of like yeah and i'm actually surprised that like we didn't come back and have aonuma tell us like one little thing Typically, the format yeah. they've used. But yeah, um, I mean, what what did they, what else did they need to say? It speaks for itself, really. Yeah, it was a mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kyle, anything else we need to cover before we sign off here? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, game looks great. 
I, if, yeah. If, if everyone, if, I don't know if everyone's surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can't wait to play. Very excited for Tears of the Kingdom, of course. We are back, and Kyle, I wanted to start off by asking you how you feel now that you've had a few hours to digest your initial thoughts on the trailer. How do I feel? Um... I mean, I still kind of a little over the moon. Like, I really like that trailer a lot. Like, the one sort of negative question mark thing I could say about it is it, <laughs> this is so specific, is it basically follows the cadence of the Breath of the Wild trailer that was so stellar mm -hmm. uh, many years ago, where it was like, you know, landscape shots, landscape shots, quiet music. And then, you know, montage, a little bit of a story tease, a weird gameplay thing. What's that? A little bit of a story tease. Like, it, it followed the same structure. Uh, but that's, like, uh, that's not a complaint. Like, that worked really well then. It worked really well here. It's uh, I've, I've watched it a few times since. And, uh, yeah, I'm still, man, it looks great. It's a great trailer for a game that looks like it'll be great. I'm taken aback by how dense that trailer is. Like, I've watched it a yeah. few times since we recorded those live reactions as well. I've just kind of checked out some general like sentiments that people have. And it's like, everybody's just like blown away by how just jam packed with stuff and how much action and how much stuff is just flashing in front of your eyes. How many questions this posed. <laughs> I mean, every There's... element of the montage, right. Where it was like every shot was two or three seconds of like something. It was like every single one of those was like, Oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? <clears throat> Sorry, I sneezed. That's how excited I was. <laughs> Bless you. Well, I just, I don't know. I, there's so many questions that have come up from this trailer of like, oh, I did not have any idea that this was A, possible or B, a thing. Like when he's jumping from like platform to platform with kind of like low gravity, it seems. Yeah. Or like the skydiving through a laser grid, like it's Mission Impossible or... I don't even know, like the the water spheres that he can swim in and then jump from sphere to sphere. Like it's a weird like Kirby's return to dreamland level. Yeah, there's like a Death Star floating in the sky with like a yeah. big hole in it for you to drop into. It. What is the thing that I think that like you would say caught you off guard the most or the thing that raised an eyebrow the most with you? Uh, uh, well, geez, Ganondorf appearing properly. I really thought that would have been something they would have held close to just wouldn't have ever shown, right? Like you don't see Ganondorf until the game's out, which is how they did Wind Waker. They did not reveal Ganondorf's design, if I remember correctly, until until after Wind Waker launched, right? I could be wrong about that, but I feel like I never saw him beforehand. And then, and it was funny, I think you can listen to our reaction that you just heard or, or watch it um, on Game Informer's alternate YouTube channel. But like the one, the weird thing that like made me like raise an eyebrow and go, whoa, oh, weird, was when Link was pulling a cart with his yeah. horse. Like, I don't know why that stuck out to me as, as like, as like, I don't know why it stands out, but it was one of those moments where I was like, Oh, right. Yeah, you can make vehicles. Oh, yeah. Link rides a horse. He could pull vehicles with the horse. And then I think it was also the combination of like, and there are characters sitting in the cart. Like it, it, it's what it, which was like every shot in that trailer did that did really well, too. It's just like, what's happening here? Like, how does this work? You know? <laughs> yeah. Like the, the mech combat that appears like it's about to happen. <laughs> yeah, like, right. What is going on in this this game? Like, I, I really good feel way, like to be clear if that was. Yes. A hundred percent. Also, speaking of get, getting a good look at Ganondorf. I just sent you something you may have missed on on if you check your Slack. I did. Yeah, I did see this. Yeah. Brian sent me the official Ganondorf art that yeah. Nintendo shared. Yeah. It's not on their press site at all. And I was just no. like on Instagram during lunch. And I was like, oh, they put out a uh, yeah, just a official tweet. art. Yeah. And so, yeah, like it's um, it's he's looking good. I yeah, think this is one cool. of the better looking Ganondorfs that we've gotten. Uh, not that there's ever really been like an abomination of a Ganondorf, but like, I don't know. I think he looks really good. He looks like he fits in this world. Like I thought that was something that I initially struggled with. It was like. How are they going to make a Ganondorf that looks like he would fit in with this like style of character? 
Mm -hmm. because Calamity Ganon was such like a a freakish, weird monster. And then we beast. Yeah. Then we got uh, the, the giant beast Ganon. And it's like, all right, well, how do you take those elements and make it into like a, a character that is, is like a human character. Right. And I think they did a good job. Well, I mean, they did have the Gerudo. Yeah, the but game, and he I, is a Gerudo, so like you kind of had a you had a basic idea of like how he would fit. But um, yeah, the other thing in retrospect, the retrospect thing, like looking back on the trailer, is and it was something. Uh, shout out to my my buddy Aaron Blevins, who's like loves Zelda as much as me, and we were instantly texting back and forth about this. Is there was an early shot, which I think if you listen to our reaction, our comment at the time was like, "Oh, they're not going to show Ganon." Because they, you see the back of a head of like flowing hair, and then he turns to the left, and the camera cuts, you know. Mm-hmm. And then later in the trailer, they show Ganondorf like full, like full face, like he there's no the question. Hair. And now the question that has been raised, and I, I tend to agree with people on the internet uh, who who pointed it out, is that that first character with the flowing red hair that we didn't see is is not Ganondorf, but is Demise from Skyward. That's kind of what I came to as well. Yeah, cause... which is like an interesting and exciting thing. Yeah, I mean, has has demise really appeared since skyward sword no Mm. it's only been ganondorf as kind of like and ganon is like the manifestation of what demise represented yeah it's tricky because like demise isn't he's a red haired boss that you fight at the end of skyward sword but he's not ever he's not ganon he's not ganondorf he's like a a different type of uh evil sort of he's like more of a manifestation of evil as opposed to like a, a character with attributes i'm trying to look up if we included Demise in our ranking of the best Ganons, I feel like... I mean, he technically it. doesn't belong on that list, right? Like it's, He is not on that list. I'm looking yeah. at it right now. What do you think is number one? Probably Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time. We put Ganondorf from Wind Waker. Oh, that's good. I mean, I'm not, I'm not upset about that. Ocarina of Time is number two, and then Breath of the Wild is number three. So I think we just did it by game. So it was like, because Ocarina of Time had both Ganondorf and Ganon. Wind Waker just had Ganondorf and then Calamity Ganon and Dark Beast Ganon in Breath of the Wild. So go to GameInformer.com and search for uh, the best Ganons ranked on uh, on that website. It's a good website. So you should go check that (laughs) out. Um, But I'm assuming we'll eventually add the uh, Tears of the Kingdom Ganon into this list as well. But yeah, anything else we need to talk about? I mean, people heard the live reaction. We've, we're still super hyped on this. We've both watched it several times in the time since. I have no idea what to expect from this game at this point because there's just they yeah. keep throwing stuff at us. And it's like, all right, you can craft your weapons. All right, you can build vehicles. Okay, now Link's platforming and riding in mine carts and fighting enemies underground in mine carts, like, uh, like Indiana Jones style, like side-by-side mine carts fighting. <laughs> yeah yeah i don't man it's i think the fun one fun element is like kind of ultimately we still don't really know a ton about it you know <laughs> which is yeah. like, which is very exciting it's uh it's very very enticing that we're still a month away from one of the biggest if not the biggest triple a release of 2023 and there's still like we know it feels like maybe three percent of what this game even is yeah and that's such yeah. a refreshing change of pace for how so many games are marketed these days and movies to be quite honest like movies i've tried to avoid watching movie trailers nowadays because of like they just tell you too much yeah no i agree yeah um but yeah i think that tears of the kingdom is still looking absolutely incredible and i uh, i can't wait to play it in just under a month so we are going to take the final break of this episode and when we get back it is the grand return of definitive ranking and eShop gem of the week we'll be right back We are back and it is time for Definitive Ranking, a recurring segment where we take a Nintendo topic and give our personal top five lists. Since the Super Mario Brothers movie features such an extensive Mario Kart sequence and we haven't done this segment in a long time, Kyle, this week I am asking you for your top five Mario Kart items. So start at five, count it down to one, and give me a little bit about each. Okay. Uh, Number five is 
a lame one that is totally disappeared after the first Mario Kart for good reason. <laughs> but I still kind of liked the feather in the original Super Mario Kart. It was just a weird thing. I never really fully figured out how to take great advantage of it. <laughs> But I just liked that it was like, oh, I can jump. It's like Mario, you know? And, and you got I'm... good news for you because it's in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's battle mode. It, or, what does it do? Does it just let you leap? Really yeah, you can jump. So I think that the primary function of it is you can jump over like incoming attacks. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and I never, so they I were never like, really oh, got into the battle mode. Yeah. Yeah, they were kind of like, oh, that's kind of useless in a race. But in battle mode, that's helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's my number five. Number four... Uh, so I guess my next three are ones that you get if you're playing poorly, right? Okay. Um, and uh, so it's chain chain chomp, right? Like that one where it's um, it 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 lets you like speed up and like chomp at everybody, <laughs> for lack of a better term, right? And then um, uh, let's see, yeah, I like that's number four. I really like the super horn actually. That was my number three, which is um. I, you know, it's great against the blue shell, right? That's it's cool that it exists in that way to let you counter the blue shell. But uh, I also just like it as like a regular weapon too. Like I like getting being able to get close to somebody and just activate it and and knock them out. But really, I think if you're smart, you just hang on to it. So I don't ever I don't use it offensively that much because if you get it, you're like, well, I'm, I just have to save this for a blue shell. Yeah, I mean that's the problem with that one, right? Is like you're just kind of like. Yeah all right, I'm in first place. That shell's probably coming. So I guess just no more power-ups for me for a while. (laughs) Yeah, I guess. Or like maybe they let you use it twice or something that maybe that would be the fix to like help you use it more. I don't know. Uh, Number two is the lightning, which has been around for a while. It's Mm -hmm. another one that is gifted to you if you're playing poorly, but it really is like satisfying to, if you use it really well, you activate the lightning. And then every, if you're close to other characters, it's fun to just see them shrink and you just speed past them. Like it's, it's that's uh it's it's always fun you know and then uh i I love that like when you run over the people they like get flattened yeah if they're they're shrunk because like i guess it hasn't been like this for a while but sometimes you get it because you're in like way last place and you don't even get a chance to like meet anybody (laughs) you know (laughs) like it just lets you catch up to the to last place which is like all right well that's something um and then my number one is just the it's boring i think but like the red shell like just a single red shell just it's like the easiest to use it's the one that has the most consistent like hit rate you know Mm -hmm. like you rarely use a red shell and don't get something fun in return of attacking somebody um and then and so, yeah, I just like it. It's always a good one to get, you know, no matter what place you're in. You're like, oh, sweet, Red Shell. Okay, that'll be helpful. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a classic, and it's a classic for a reason. Been pretty much overpowered since Super Mario Kart, but it's just, it's awesome when you get a Red Shell, for sure. Right. Um, so my top five list has, a, I don't know, some overlap, but not actually, maybe not at all, because I did change it up a little bit. Um, so that's kind of surprising, actually. So number five, I'm going to see obligatory blue shell, but it, yeah. it, it's at five because, again, as you said, it's the one that you get if you're doing poorly. And, uh, you know, it's iconic and it made an appearance in the Mario movie, but it's just like it, it's so annoying if you're in first place because there's only one line of defense and that line of defense makes it so you basically can you have to hold on to it and not get any other items. And you're lucky if you even get that line of defense. So it's annoying in that way. Right. Um, but I'm not like one of the people that's like, oh, they should get rid of it. It's like, oh, maybe have like a, another way to defend against it as well. I don't know. Number four, uh, the boo. Because it's always fun when you're playing with friends and like you can tell they've been holding on to a power up and you can steal it from them. <laughs> I don't know. There's something satisfying about that because you get their power up and also they're very annoyed. <laughs> yeah, those yeah, those are the best the best uh, items, right? The yeah. ones that annoy. Absolutely. Uh, number three, the fire flower, because uh, you can just spam fireballs at people for like a very short period, and it, it's extremely effective if there's just like a group of racers in front of you. That that is nice, honestly. If I if I I had not I did not recall that one when I was thinking of my list. Um, 
but that one might have been like on my number five maybe because that one is really fun to get it's so fun to just like keep mashing the attack button and just watching the the fireballs go off and maybe you hit like two out of like the 10 that you throw but <laughs> right yeah, yeah. It, it's effective um number two the boomerang flower and that is just again it's a fun power up to use and it isn't the most effective maybe i actually bounced back and forth between the boomerang flower and the piranha plant for my number two but i ultimately went with the boomerang flower because i don't know there's something fun about the way it like flies out and then comes back to you and it just kind of takes and it has a chance to take racers out on the way out and on the way back and it's it's fun in that way and then my number one this is the closest that we got to some overlap, but I'm I'm going to do specifically the triple red shell. The tr- I'm going for the triple specifically. And because of be- all the reasons that we said about your single red shell, but it also has that defensive element to it where like you can just have like a force field of red shells. So it's defensive and offensive and yeah. then fire them away when you need to. But in the meantime, hey, you have a, a shield of shells around you and it's extremely useful. Yeah, I guess the only reason I didn't go for that one is because like I feel like that one's rare, you know. It's rare, and it and that doesn't I don't know because I don't get it as often. It like I, I, that that was a factor for me for some reason that I can't explain. <laughs> okay, interesting. I mean, a lot of those are rare if you're good at Mario Kart because <laughs> sure, right, yeah, I guess that's true. If you're good at Mario Kart, you're probably not getting a blue shell or a a bonsai bill or whatever it's called. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, those I, I very much enjoy Mario Kart, and one of those reasons is the items that you get. I also thought about doing the the uh, fake item block, like, but they haven't oh, done that right. in a while. Yeah, that's they got rid of that one, right? Because it's yeah. I mean, I guess from their perspective, it's kind of like tricking another player, and it's well, that's probably exactly like, what it's doing. <laughs> yeah, like, and if and that's maybe that Nintendo kind of looks at that as like. Yeah, no one likes being tricked. Like it's it's not fun to be on the other end of the that, but it is it is fun when you see someone hit that thing. But it's also nice that like if you just put it in the middle of the track, everybody's gonna be like, oh, that's a fake one because it's not like in like a line of three. But then when you go to like if you get a perfectly placed one, it's in like a perfect line with the other ones, or if you even lay it over top of another one, it's like, oh yeah, somebody's absolutely gonna take the bait on that. Right. Uh, so I, I toyed with that one, but it, because it's no longer with us, uh, rest <laughs> in peace, I, I for, forewent it, foregoed right. it. Yeah. I don't know. It's not a contemporary Mario Kart power. Up. Correct. Or, um, but yeah, so that's that's my top five. So that leaves us with the final segment of the show, the eShop Gem of the Week. I'm actually going to take this one because I have one that I've been meaning to talk about for a while, but I just haven't gotten around to it on this show. That is Bad North you heard about this game kyle this does sound familiar i'm googling it right now yeah i think i've I've seen the sort of logo but i don't know what it is so from uh publisher raw fury who a lot of people know is a a pretty good indie publishing house and uh basically like it's like a real-time strategy on like a micro level where you're on this tiny little island and you're defending against viking invaders and you have to uh, on the switch anyway you use the shoulder buttons to select which troop you want to command and each troop has different specialties like one of them might be a troop of archers one of so it might be a good idea to position them on a higher ground so they can hit incoming invaders from afar or other ones have pikes so they can like kind of do more range stuff other ones have swords so they're better with like once people are on the ground you can get uh close combat but it's really just managing where these squads go and like as the fights happen like they will take out members of your team and you can send them back into like a house in order to replenish. And that, but that takes them off the board for like, I want to say like 15, 20 seconds, which is actually a pretty substantial amount of time in the middle of these battles. So you have to be very, very cautious about that. But then if you completely lose a troop, then that's just gone for good. So you have to manage the balancing act of, all right, is it worth taking this off before they get even more deplenished? And then uh, you have to, kind of go back and and not have that troop for the rest of the time or you know it, it's it's just a lot of on the fly decision making and choosing troops and making sure they have the best positioning and it's it's a lot of fun i remember playing it at god was it gdc 2016 2017 something like that and mm. being blown away by it and i got it and I, I don't like it quite as much as i did in that demo because like you know i played it for longer on my switch 
but I still really enjoy it. And here's another thing that pushed me over the edge with recommending it right now. Normally it's fifteen dollars, but currently it is on sale for three seventy four. So right. that's uh, that's something Last that's time worth you, checking out. You called out something as a because it was on sale, which I'm grateful that you do. I really like it. I and I I I went and bought it. It was the ukulele game. <laughs> yeah, did you? And you played it? I played a little bit of it. Yeah, just it's like the fun. levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, with with that, it's like okay, well, this is a uh, this is definitely a callback to Donkey Kong Country, and it's a lot of people who <laughs> helped make Donkey Kong Country. That's like right. Dave, even David Wise and Grant Kirkhope are doing the soundtrack. So it's uh, those are two eShop gems that I can recommend wholeheartedly to pretty much anyone listening to this podcast. But yeah, Bad North is the name of the game that I am recommending this week. And uh, yeah, Kyle, I think that's an episode. Is there anything else we need to talk about? No, we hit uh, Tears of the Kingdom. We hit it hard. We talked uh, a lot of a lot of news as well at the top of the yeah. show. So thanks for joining me for this episode, for the catch up, for the Tears of the Kingdom final pre-launch trailer, whatever they ended up calling it, and for these final two segments. So I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Of course. And thank you so much to everyone for listening. Do me a favor. If you haven't already, throw All Things Nintendo a five-star review and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get any questions or comments in, you can get in touch with me at allthingsnintendo at gameinformer.com or hit me up on Instagram at Brian P. Shea. And you can also join the Game Informer community Discord, which is a perk for subscribing to our Twitch channel even for just one month. Kyle, where can people find you online? Twitter, which is, you know, it's, it's going great over there, Brian, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been on Twitter since... I guess it was like oh, January so cool or February. There. There's so much cool stuff happening there. Yeah, I saw <laughs> the that like is bright. <laughs> I saw like guess like the Doge thing is now like the official icon. Of yeah, Twitter. I think that's already gone. But look, okay. yeah, I'm still there. Whatever. And then, every time uh, I load it up, like to like look at like news or anything, because like every once in a while it's like, oh, this company tweeted this thing, and I'll go look at like their official tweet for it. I don't have an account anymore, so it's just giving me like neutral recommendations. The tweet algorithm recommendations are always just the worst people alive <laughs> and it's like okay well this is reinforcement i don't need to get back on twitter but yes uh people can find you on twitter and all those great places yeah. and go follow the game informer tiktok account please we're almost yeah. we're almost at a thousand we're very close yeah go do that we got reviews we got other uh segments from our streams it's it's a good old time over on tiktok if you choose to partake over there but For all things Nintendo, that's our show for this week. Thank you again for listening. Take care. We'll see you next time.